60 degrees Fahrenheit. Just hit 8,000 miles. So, we're finally getting a beautiful day, and it's a Friday. Doesn't get better than that. But all week, the temperatures have been high in the 40s, lows, low 30s, high 20s in the morning. And people ask, like, how do you do it? How do you ride in, in the cold? It's pretty simple. Uh, heated gear. That's the that's the number one element in making cold weather riding feasible, bearable. Is is heated gear. I use hot wired liners. I have their glove liners. I don't have them in now because it's 60 degrees out. I have their pant liners, the jacket liner. I have an adapter to make it go from the round plug to my battery tender and a little lead. Uh, these Andy's Dry Star gloves and the Andy's boots. Uh, Dry Star also waterproof, warmer, when, especially when combined with the glove liners. But that's, that's the biggest thing on how. Why is a different question. Why is my, my deep-seated hatred for traffic? In New York City, I think along with LA, are probably two best uh, cities well known for traffic. And that's 100% true. Traffic and crazy drivers, but that's my motivating force. That's that deep-seated hatred for not wanting to sit in traffic. Oh. That's it. That's number one. I'll deal with cold. I'll deal with anything else to avoid sitting in traffic. I know I've been sitting in traffic as I was just talking. I can deal with normal traffic. I can't deal with this, what seems to be engineered traffic. Lane reductions, bus lanes that remove travel lanes, bike lanes that remove travel lanes. Like that's the type of stuff that I, I have a hard time dealing with. You know, taking a longer way home today just because it's such a beautiful day. But normally it's not this bad. And, and like I said, if it's just traffic for, to be, you know, because of this traffic, because it's an accident, I, I can deal with that. But the changes the New York City DOT has done to traffic lights, to, I mean, even this ridiculousness. Like, what is this? Why? This used to be no problem. And now here we are. Let's cause more traffic. Let's let's make it four cycles for a light to change instead of two. Like that's the type of insanity that that New York City does that drives me out of my mind. And also the photo enforcement. The photo enforcement that's just slowed everybody down. It's it's unreasonable. You know, when do you hold pedestrians accountable? The people walking around, buried in their cell phones, not paying attention. They walk out in front of a truck or a car, and it's the driver's fault. You know, when, when I was younger, my parents taught me, yeah, pedestrians have the right of way, but you still got to pay attention because if you get hit by a car, you, you might be right, but you're going to lose. And I feel like that's not taught anymore. I feel like it's like you're right no matter what. So, is it parents' fault? Are they not watching their kids? Are they not teaching them? Maybe a little bit. Is it lawmakers? Is it cultural? I'm sure it's a whole bunch of all that. But to, to blame it 100% on the drivers, to blame it 100% on speed, to try to engineer this congestion, which brings me to a whole different topic on congestion pricing. 
this governor. I've never seen anyone so happy as when she was announcing to be the first in the nation with congestion pricing. I mean, how could you be so evil to be so happy to be taxing your citizens even more? You know? And if they're the first, they'll be the, just the model. There'll be more. But it's, it's congestion pricing they say they need, right? But they've done nothing except create congestion. Like, all of this stuff. This used to be three lanes. They shift everything. They, they time lights, all this stuff. This is just to create congestion so they can justify congestion pricing, in, in my opinion. But, but to be happy about it, I mean, just thrilled. Uh, what a what a garbage governor we have, you know. And they're in total denial that people are leaving New York, same as California, and they're in complete denial as to why. Also, we don't have a straight piece of road in New York City. We don't. I don't think we have a quarter mile of road that's straight. I mean, when I say straight, I mean straight, not bumpy, not with ruts, not with dips, not with potholes. With, with New York City's budget, you would think they'd be able to have beautiful roads, but no. Nope. Even the bus lane, which you're allowed to be in until 4 p.m., but even the bus lane, it's I'm choppy and... You know, recently took a trip to Biketoberfest in Daytona, and we were riding around in some of these other states, Georgia, Florida, and the roads are just so smooth, so perfect. Why, why can't we have it? New York City has a budget almost the size of the entire state of Florida, and we can't have a smooth, straight road anywhere it's absurd so yeah that's why people are leaving I've got a few years left until my business interests are completed and, and I'm out I'm, I'm heading for sunnier shores but maybe there's one one thing I, I was thinking is you might see more interest and I think you've already started to see more interest in motorcycle ownership in New York City and around the tri-state area I mean you can get around easier it's cheaper to park it's easier to find parking you know cheaper to insure lots of advantages to it for the most part better fuel economy if you're just putting around commuting there are so many great bikes out there reliable so maybe that'll be a good thing you start to see more and more motorcycle ownership maybe sales will, will be driven you know it was really cool to see Honda and Kawasaki still investing in their 600s when so many others have dropped out or have stopped investing I don't know Maybe all this congestion can be a good thing. I mean, I don't like it. I'm a car guy too. And it's it's real tough to find time to even use my GTR these days. But, and then there are the occasional moments that you live for on a motorcycle. Just to enjoy the, the, the wind, the feeling, the environment weaving in and out safely mind you I don't think anything I'm doing is would be considered unsafe not necessarily in compliance with all laws but this is more of the stupidity this is there's no reason for this traffic like there's no accident at the end of this 
What is it, sun? Seriously? Can't see in the sun? Mike, I just don't get it. And this is just all time. Again, if I got to the end and there was an accident, and God forbid, I don't want to see people get into an accident, but if there was an accident, a breakdown, something, I'd say, all right, there was a reason for that. But you get to the end, and there's nothing. There's no reason. Oh, I see another motorcyclist. Let's see what we got here. Is he a scooter? No, no, I think he's a motorcycle. Very cool. Today, actually. Which is cool. I'm happy to see people taking advantage of this beautiful weather. Why not? Take advantage of the weather. Get through traffic. It's like a win-win. I think I'm going to get off this, though. Just because I know the streets around here can be a little bit more fun. Even if this will get me home faster. You know, while I do lane split, it's... I wouldn't say it's my favorite activity. I just hate sitting in traffic more. It's like I hate sitting in traffic more than being cold. I hate sitting in traffic more than lane splitting. You know. That's what it comes down to. It's all about the traffic. Sometimes these are just more fun, even if it's slower, or I don't know. I feel like it's safer than, than weaving through traffic. Probably don't save any time, because you can, you can kind of weave and you don't have lights to deal with, but I don't know, it just feels like more fun to me. As long as people cooperate, you don't catch every light, you know. But uh, there's not much you could do about that. This clutch continues to drop. And I keep adjusting it and I have to eventually bleed it. Usually up top, here. brought it in, had, a, uh, had them look at it, it's like, nothing's wrong, nothing's wrong, I don't know, it's just, it's annoying that on such a great bike, they, uh, they can't get something simple like the clutch right, but then again, neither could Harley Davidson, and their bike's expensive, I wouldn't call it great, but expensive, and they actually went back to a cable clutch, because they couldn't get the hydraulic clutch right, uh, I'm not saying that's the solution, I like the hydraulic clutch. What I don't get is why the hydraulic clutch on my 959 is flawless. And this one isn't. I mean, should be very similar system, same manufacturers. The difference of a year, my 959 is an 18. This is a 19. You know, you'd think they could get something right. But, or... I shouldn't say they could get something right. How did they get it right in one aspect and then wrong in the next? It, it, that's the part that really confuses me. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll dig further into it. I know on the newer ones, they went to what they call a self-bleeding uh, master cylinder for the clutch. And maybe that was the, the solution. Because it, it's always the master. I, I bleed the master and the clutch is perfect. And it's perfect for a while. And then it starts to sink, starts to sink, and the next thing you know, and it happens slowly. You almost don't realize it, or I don't realize it, until I'll go to, like, leave a light, and then I'll stall it. And I'm like, well, you know, I've been riding bikes a long time, and I've been riding this bike. There's, there's no reason why I should be stalling it. And then you realize, oh, okay, the clutch is grabbing right off the handlebar. You give it an adjustment or two, and that helps, and you kind of forget about it, and then... It happens again, you give it a little bit more adjustment, and then you forget again, and the next thing you know, you're out of adjustment, 
and the clutch is grabbing immediately and you have to stop and bleed the brakes and I generally hope I remember this before leaving for a longer trip I like to leave for a longer trip with my adjustments in as much as possible so I can adjust it while I'm on the trip you know I hate to run out of adjustment on the trip that just that just sucks I guess that about wraps it up. I'm pretty much done for the day. But these are the things I think about just commuting back and forth. Things that annoy me, things that make me happy. And, uh, and again, I stress cold weather riding, the right gear, heated gear, and you're good to go.